what do I even like? Who, who do I get to be in this next phase? And I find human design is, is such a great tool to help them fill in the gaps, you know, like lead them back to what did your soul come here to do? You know, who are you really meant to be? Hey, midlifers, welcome to the Midlife Makeover Show. Are you ready to break free from your mundane midlife? Are you feeling trapped in a vicious cycle of rinse and repeat days? No matter if you're experiencing a divorce hangover, job burnout, or you just have the midlife blues, I got you. Hey, I'm Wendy, your hostess of the Midlife Mostess. I too was hit by midlife like a freight train. I too felt stuck in the same dull chapter. I wanted the clarity of how to create a new life beyond divorce and the courage to leave an unfulfilling career. But I kept telling myself that I wasn't worthy and it was just easier to stay in my comfort zone until I found a little secret, the freedom to live my life my way. In this podcast, you will learn how to achieve a vibrant midlife mind and body, how to create solid relationships through love and loss, and how to create an awesome second half of life. Grab your grande latte, pop in your earbuds, and let's get this midlife party started. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to share a big update with you today. Over the past 90 days, more than half of our audience, 54.7% to be exact, were viewers and listeners who haven't yet subscribed to our channel. Studies suggest that making something easily accessible helps form habits. By subscribing, you're setting yourself up for regular doses of happiness, health, and healing. Your subscription means everything to me. It enables us to create richer, more impactful content for you and everyone else. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. Welcome back to the Midlife Makeover Show. Today, we are joined by Lori Lisai, a human design mentor and alignment coach, who has transformed her own life and is passionate about helping others do the same. After a successful 26-year career in teaching, Lori followed her intuition and embarked on an entrepreneurial journey. She now dedicates her time to helping midlife women break free from the burden of others' expectations and outdated belief systems. Oh, yes. In this episode, Lori will introduce us to the fascinating world of human design. I cannot wait to learn more about this, focusing on how to make the next decade the most fulfilling of your life as it should be. We'll delve into the five secrets hidden with your human design and explore actionable steps to harness this knowledge for lasting fulfillment. Get ready for an enlightening conversation that could truly transform the way you view and navigate your life. Please welcome Lori to the show. Hello, Wendy. So happy to be here. Thank you so much. I'm digging all your stuff in the background there. The the little, uh, what is that? Astrology? What is that? Yeah. So this is, uh, these are a couple of moon uh, calendars and, you know, just, yeah, some more love, mostly love for the moon and plants and all the fun things. Yeah. I'm like, again, super excited to learn about human design. I know nothing about it. So if anybody else is listening and that doesn't know anything about it, that's great. We're not alone here. Um, so explain human design to us. Yeah. So, uh, human design, it is a complex system, but essentially it's, it's a tool to better know yourself. You know, that is, uh, essentially what it comes down to and it's meant to be an experiment. So when you learn the different components of your human design, it's, an invitation to just say, okay, now you know this about yourself. You know that this is how your energy works because um, that is what all of these systems together give you is this energetic blueprint. Mm. And when you know that about yourself, then you can start to implement and just sort of play around with it and see how it works and start to notice new things about yourself that maybe you hadn't before. And I think ultimately it ends up feeling incredibly empowering. And at least with a lot of the women that I work with, 
they find permission in their human design that sometimes they didn't even know that they were looking for. Um, and a lot of validation uh, mm. around like the things that they've always naturally felt drawn to or wanted to do or ways of expressing themselves and trusting themselves that they've they've second guessed for years. And so learning their design really helps them to lean into that, lean into that kind of natural inclination. I was yeah. just going to use that word natural to yeah. just like be naturally authentic and transparent and vulnerable. And, and I, I, I do find like, as people are wanting to change their lives and change themselves, sometimes we look too much on the outside to do all these things when really it's just going back to yourself and going, Hey girl, what do you want? What do you like? And sometimes, and that's why I love, uh, like methods like this to be able to unpack some of that, to really get down to who you truly are. And like you said, there's probably things that you wouldn't even realize about yourself. Whereas I bet there's like probably a lot of light bulb moments for people after they know their human design, like, Oh, right. And then that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. 100%. And people, uh, there's one part of your human design, for example, uh, that teaches you how to make decisions. Like how are you specifically Mm. designed to make decisions? And when you learn that it takes so much of the guesswork out you know, of of just yeah. like constantly doubting yourself and feeling like, oh, I don't know if that was the right way to go. And, um, you know, just learning how to really, like you said, it's not, it's the natural way that we are inclined to, uh, to function and to be in the world. And the, the part that you, when you were introducing me and talking about, uh, shedding others expectations, yes. that's the hard work, really. That's yeah. the, or the work. Um, sometimes it's harder than others because it takes learning how to set boundaries and learning how to speak up for yourself, right? Uh, and learning how to not say yes, just because you can, uh, Mm -hmm. but say, you know, being willing to say no lovingly, uh, you know, those, those kinds of pieces all come into play when you start to experiment and your human design gives you talking points. It gives you like language Mm. to really dig into that instead of just saying like, well, I want to, you know, I want to be more of myself. Um, yeah, that women, women, our age, sorry, women, our age has, have been like, we've been following sort of this path that's been laid out for us. So clearly, you know, and, and oftentimes we don't even really know what we want. We're just sort of following blindly, you know, yeah. going after, right. And then we get to this point in our late thirties, forties, fifties, even where we're like, wait, wait, <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Like, how did I end up here and who the hell am I? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And do well, I even fun, like the kind of going back to your saying before, it's like, as you start to change, and change your behaviors and how you speak and how you think and how you act, then it changes the dynamic of your relationships. And that can cause some turmoil, which that's when you really do, like you said, have to create some good, healthy boundaries. And the the people pleasing and all of that stuff has to go out the window because you have to take a stand for yourself and the person that you're becoming. And really, it's the person that you always were. It's just, yeah. it was covered up with society's expectations or friends and family and everything and everyone except for the person that's deep down in there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I, I I couldn't agree more. And the, the amount of women that I work with who are in that sort of phase where they're starting to kind of get curious, like, hmm, do I really like these people that I <laughs> spend so much time with? Or do I even like this thing that I've been doing for years and years and years, you know? Or, uh, you know, maybe their kids are leaving and, you know, they're, they've grown up and, now you've got all this free time and yeah, you know, they don't even know where to start. Like what, 
what do I even like? Who, who do I get to be in this next phase? And I find human design is, is such a great tool to help them fill in the gaps, you know, like lead them back to what did your soul come here to do? You know, who are you really meant to be? Yeah. And I I would have to say too, well, at least for me, I would always ask myself like, you know, who am I? What is my purpose? Why am I here? I mean, you get this tiny little, you know, blink of time and eternity. What are you going to do with it? And like, what is your purpose? And I do think that evolves. I do think that that changes your purpose in life. Like you, you could have one purpose and your purpose isn't always a vocation. I used to think that like year, decades ago, I would think like, oh, my purpose is my vocation or my career. No, not, not necessarily so. Yeah, yeah. no, 100%. It's, uh, it's not necessarily. I mean, it, it's, it's the thread that is, is woven throughout your life from, you know, the moment you were born to the moment you take your last breath, that is your purpose. So really your vocation can be a way that you express your purpose, right. Mm -hmm. And how you share with other people and how you serve other people, but it's not like really your purpose is to be your authentic self. Yes. It, it, like that is why you came here. It's to be this human in this body in this time, you know, and uh, in human design, there are a few places to look for, for sort of hints about mm-hmm. our purpose. You know, there's something called the incarnation cross, which is a combination of some different placements that you have in your chart uh, that is all about purpose. Um, and then there's your conscious sun gate, which is similar to like your zodiac sign. Uh, mm. You know, I'm a cancer, for example. So uh, it's but it's dialed down a little bit more than that. So, um, you know, there are there are definitely a number of places where we look in human design for purpose. Um, and I find that that's a great place to look when women are feeling really lost or feeling the need to redefine themselves, because Mm -hmm. that can, you know, just give them something to experiment with, give them some, some questions to ask themselves and see what comes of it. How, how was this created? Was it one person that created it or organization or? Yeah, the story is kind of wild. Uh, so human design came on the scene in the eighties, the 1980s. Oh, so wow. I didn't know yeah. that. It seemed like it was just in the last few years or that I've been hearing about it. Yeah. Well, I huh. think, you know, as, as more and more people kind of wake up, so to speak, yep. uh, I think it's becoming much more popular and, uh, it's, but the story is kind of wild. This, uh, a man downloaded it essentially mm-hmm. on, uh, on, you know, a, a spiritual walkabout, uh, mm-hmm. in Ibiza. Uh, and the, so th- that story is a little wild. And also I think it, it's always comes back to the idea of the experiment, you know, and the systems that are included in human design have been around for eons, mm-hmm. you know, so really the, the difference here is just that they've all been synthesized. So, mm-hmm. and, and the systems are, you know, familiar to a lot of people like Western astrology is part of the human design system. Um, the chakra system mm-hmm. um, is part of human design, the, uh, the Kabbalah or tree of life. Some, you know, mm-hmm. people might know about that. Um, and then you also have, uh, science in human design. So you've got quantum mechanics and genetics and biology. So, you know, it's, it's like all of these systems were just thrown in the, you know, proverbial pot and given Mm -hmm. a stir and out comes something new and evolved. Wow. That's, I can see why you were a teacher. You're good. (laughs) You're good at teaching and explaining. Oh, good. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I'm glad it's making sense. That's good because it so, is, you know. Yeah. How did you come across even to do human design and you were teaching for 26 years, right? Yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, I had always been interested in astrology and, uh, you know, some like of the woo woo. Uh, and I, 
it was part of a course that I took on manifestation, actually. Mm. Uh, and so I had been learning about that and just the, I, you know, I was fascinated by the science of it and just the idea that, or the fact that everything is energy and how, you know, directing your thoughts can really change the outcome of things. Mm -hmm. And it was part of this course that I took. And once I started learning about human design, it was, it was, uh, such a clear, uh, feeling in my body, like, oh, this, this is interesting. This is for you. And I, I like to remind the people that I work with that if something is drawing your attention, if you feel drawn to it, it is for you in some way, shape or form, there's something there for you. So go toward that, you know, follow that pull. Um, and <clears throat> so I just, I dove deep. Uh, I, I read, I, you know, listened to podcasts. I, did my own research. And then, um, I enrolled in HD school, which is Katie Irvine's, um, oh, yeah. uh, course. And it mm. was fabulous. And, uh, and then just started doing readings and I was talking about it already with some of my colleagues at school and helping them. And so it, it definitely came about very naturally, uh, mm. which is, you know, also I think a nice indication of when something is, on track. When it's aligned with you. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And you know what? Like I, I love the fact that it is connected to astrology or somehow that was in the pot, you know, <laughs> that was mixed in together because yeah. I had not really been into astrology that much. And I've always been into the woo woo stuff. Always, always will be. But, um, I saw an astrologist, um, it was before I had moved to Chicago. It was I, shortly after I had had my little midlife meltdown that many of my listeners have heard before. And mm -hmm. I was confused at where to go and what to do. And a friend of mine was like, oh, you should go see this astrologist in Virginia beach. And I was like, okay. And <laughs> honestly, I, I sat there and he just kind of rattled off a bunch of stuff and it all seemed so crazy. I was like, this guy doesn't know shit about me, what uh -huh. I like to do. And I'm like, I don't know where he's getting this information from. And that's, again, someone that's into the woo-woo and believes in the woo-woo. But I was like, this guy is woo-woo. Um, so this is crazy. Quick story. Well, I'm already in the story. But uh, here it is. I get this job offer in Chicago. I moved to Chicago. I'm, I'm selling... Um, you know, homes, uh, selling houses in Chicago, blah, blah, blah. And I end up buying the RV, right? And I am getting rid of everything that was in my apartment in Chicago so that I could move into this RV. And no joke, there was this compact disc. I don't even have compact disc anymore. And there was this disc and I thought, what the hell is this? And I put it in the garbage pile. I was like, I'm, I'm not going to give it to Goodwill. I was like, I'll just put it in gar garbage. It's not going with me. And there was something about this disc that I was like, why is it like, what is on this stupid CD? I didn't even have, it was a DVD actually. I didn't have a DVD or see, I'm like, how am I going to play this thing? Yeah. And I found this, uh, whatever, a, a player and I, and it was the recording of this astrologist. Mm-hmm. No shit. <laughs> he predicted the whole thing. He even said, you're going to move to this new city, take on a new job, uh, a city that's near a large body of water. Hello, Lake Michigan. And then you're going to take off and start your own show. And he literally said, it's going to be pedal to the metal in November of 2021, which is when I took off in the RV, I just, I was like, oh my God. So yeah, it, the stuff is real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There oh are no, anyways, yeah. but yeah. that's, and maybe that's why I've always been, I shared with you before we hit record, I've had a few human designers, if you will, you know, want to be on the show. And I had not, I mean, I'm always booked like months out. And then like you, I got your, you know, request. I was like, yes, let's do this human design thing. I'm like, what the hell is this? You know? Uh, oh, so yeah. good. I'm so excited. good. I love that. And, and I love how you were naturally pulled to that DVD, right? Like you kept having that question, like, is this 
that that is oh I love that story that's fantastic yeah so definitely yeah I, and, and that's the thing like very rarely will we listen to those whispers and those calls right from our soul mm-hmm. like listen to them because there's something there and and sometimes I think it's just even if I hadn't met that astrologist I think I probably would have still gone down that pathway but it was just the um what's the word am I looking for the affirmation or the confirmation of yes you are on the right path you're doing the thing that the real true Wendy is supposed to be doing. Yeah. And especially yeah. through that upheaval, right? Yes. When yeah. there can be a lot of doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Doubt, right. confusion. So what all can the human design tell you? I know you had said a little bit of like, what, you know, like what's your purpose, but what else can it tell you? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So much. Um, <laughs> but oftentimes where people start is with, Uh, something called type strategy and authority. Uh, Those are sort of the big three, whereas, you know, in Western astrology, for example, your big three would be your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign. In human design, it's like, learn what uh, energy type you are. So there are five Mm. different energy types, and your energy type basically tells you how your aura is meant to function, like how, how it does function, um, in the world. And, you know, that aura being roughly six ish feet around you, uh, and how it affects other people. Right. Uh, and it took me about 10 seconds of being on, (laughs) on video with you to know probably what your type was. And so I'm so glad when you pulled up your (laughs) your chart and I was right. And it was right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was right. Yep. Um, so your type uh is how your aura, you know, functions and how it's meant to also interact with other people's auras. Uh, and then your strategy talks about basically like how to take action, how to take aligned mm-hmm. action in the world. And then your authority is your decision making. Like what do you what do you lean on when you need to make decisions? How should you actually approach decision making in your life? Mm. So those are kind of three biggies, um, good places to start. Uh, and then, you know, from there, like I said, there it's a combination of so many different systems. So there are lots of different layers, and you can get much more specific. Um, I mentioned your sun gate earlier that mm-hmm. carries roughly seventy percent of the kind of the energy weight in your chart. So Mm -hmm. understanding that and knowing that is, um, is a really great place to, to, to start to understand what, what supports you, what, what energy is really meant to flow through you Mm -hmm. and, uh, and more into your purpose. Yeah. And I think the more that we, um, Except because it's, we are energy. We are what ninety nine point nine 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 percent energy, and but many of us are only concentrated on that point zero 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 one percent of matter, mm. and that's just like a teensy tiny part of us. But we're all energy, and I think the more that we can tap into that, we can really use that in our life to to maneuver through life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> can we talk a little bit about your type? Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually like, okay. So if you guys are, if you're not on YouTube, then go on YouTube because <laughs> I'm going to share my chart that I just did, which by the way, if you go to Lori's website, Lori Lisai, which is L O R I L I S A I. Did I say it right? Got it. Yeah. Um, and on there, I think it's something like get your chart mm-hmm. and yeah. you can put in, uh, put in your name, your date of birth, your time of birth, which you don't know, right? Ask, yeah. ask your parents, ask, look on your birth certificate. Sometimes they have it on there. Um, call the hospital, whatever. But what what is the point in, in knowing the, the time of birth? Yeah. So, uh, so going back to the, the combination of systems, uh, mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll explain to you how a chart is generated. Uh, there's something called a neutrino. A neutrino is the very tiniest, smallest bit of measurable matter. 
And that matter has information on it. And it's traveling through every bit and part, uh, like our bodies, it travels through the air, it's it's mm. everywhere. Um, and it's carrying this information. And so when your chart, the reason that knowing that exact birth time is important is because it's essentially the, it captures the neutrino stream uh, mm. that was going through you when you were born at the moment of wow. your birth. And it also captures it uh, roughly 88 days before your birth, which is when we first hmm. uh, become conscious in the womb. Uh, and so you have these two kind of parts of your chart. One is is the unconscious side and one is the conscious side. Um, and so knowing that exact time is really helpful. There are, you know, some charts will change a lot in a 24-hour period some charts will change, you know, a little bit, uh, but because it's related to the movement in the universe, it's, you know, there are definitely shifts. So the more you can ensure that you have the correct birth time, the better off and the more accurate your chart is going to be. Okay. That makes sense. And then also the location. I mean, most of us know where we were born, but um, but that's it, right? And then as soon as you put that information in, then you can download your chart. Mm -hmm. And then there's even some helpful information on there. It seems like I didn't look at all of it yet because I have you. Uh, <laughs> but then it will explain, right, what the chart yeah. is and what all that means. Do you ask yourself questions like, who am I? What is my purpose? Why am I living a life I don't love? Answers to these questions and more are revealed in the new Freedom at Midlife group coaching program, where I offer you a guaranteed roadmap to your own midlife makeover. In this powerful seven-week program, you will learn the seven steps to freedom method to help you discover who you want to become, what life you want to live, and most importantly, how to get there. Instead of being lost in life, miserable in menopause, or struggling to juggle it all, you could reignite your love life, retire that dreadful job, and reinvent yourself. So, if you're ready to begin your midlife journey of transformation filled with accountability, guidance, and support, then the time is now. Your midlife needs you to make a move. The Freedom at Midlife program is opening for enrollment soon with limited spots available. To be the first to know when we are open for enrollment, please join the waitlist now at freedomatmidlife.com and you will soon discover that next courageous step in creating your epic second half of life. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to share my screen here, kids. Okay, you can see that, right? Perfect. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So here's my chart. All right. And so, you know, when you first if you're brand new to human design and you first get this, you, it can be a little overwhelming. Like, what am I looking at? <laughs> all these numbers and lines and shapes and blah. Um, so I'll just very briefly explain where you can see some of the systems that I've talked about. Um, so you see on both sides of the chart are these two columns with numbers and then the planetary glyphs. Mm -hmm. um, so those planetary glyphs, that's where you see the Western astrology come in. Um, and then the numbers on that are next to each of these, they correlate with the numbers that are inside these different shapes. So if you, for example, have um, gate nine in your conscious sun, so the conscious sun is up at the top right corner um, the top of the blue column, mm -hmm. uh, you see that it says 9.1 and that little circle with a dot in the middle, that's the sun glyph. And so your conscious sun is in gate nine and gate nine lives down here in the, uh, you see at the very bottom of the chart is your root center. That's the square, uh, at the very bottom oh. of your chart. And then right here. Yep. So that okay. is called the root center. So um, each of the shapes in the chart are roughly correlated to the chakra system. The difference being that the um, original chakra system has seven and human design has nine energy centers. So this is the root 
And then if you go up one from that, um, yep, that square there, that's called your sacral. And you see gate nine is right there. So ah. all of the gates that are colored in in black, you're going to see those either on the yellow side or the blue, the blue side here, the blue columns. Um, <clears throat> and so you can see where they are in your chart and you can also see where they are with, um, with the planetary influences. Okay. So, that so, makes sense. Okay. So each of the, each of the shapes are energy centers. So we've got the sacral here that you're pointing to. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if you go to the right of the sacral, uh, you've got, yep, this triangle here, that's called the emotional solar plexus. And then if you go opposite of that on the other side of the chart, yep, that's the mm -hmm. spleen center. This one is the oldest center uh, that we have. It's the one that we share with animals. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you move up to the big triangle, or sorry, the diamond shape, um, mm -hmm. that is the identity center or your G center. And then the little triangle in between the, yep, the emotional solar plexus and the G and identity center, that's called your heart or your ego. Um, some of them do have a couple of different names. Um, <clears throat> and then moving up from that, you, you've got the throat center, the big square. And the way that human design works, it's like all of the energy from the bottom of the chart moves up toward the mm -hmm. throat. Mm -hmm. And then you have these two centers at the top. Uh, so the bottom triangle at the top of the chart here, that's called the Ajna or the mind. And then the top one is called the head. And so this energy of the head and the Ajna also moves down toward the throat. So in human design, the throat is really, we call it the manifestation center, but essentially what that means is basically how do we communicate out yeah. all the energy, right? The That's expression, it. right? The expression of your self. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So this is interesting. I was just looking at the inner authority decision making. Um, and so it says emotional solar plexus. So yes. let me take a guess at that. Um, so I like making decisions or it is best for me, or it is my nature to make decisions from my heart, more of an emotion, from an emotional standpoint. Is that what that means? So yes and no. Um, mm -hmm. first of all, I just want to differentiate the emotional from the heart because we do uh, have a separate heart center in human design, um, which is really more about uh, it's about desire and wants versus mm -hmm. the emotional uh, kind of component and spectrum. So okay. yours, however, is linked directly to your heart. Mm -hmm. So what you said in particular is true for you. Okay. So it, it could depend on, you know, if you have an emotional solar plexus that is defined, what I mean by defined is if it's colored in. Mm -hmm. uh, versus you see your head and your Ajna up at the top of the chart are white. Those mm -hmm. are undefined. Oh. So you have a, a defined emotional solar plexus. 50% of the population has this same uh, thing in their design. 50% um, of people have a defined emotional solar plexus. However, how it's defined is different. Like yours is because it's got this channel to, so these uh, lines connecting the heart or little the little triangle there to the emotional solar plexus, the bigger triangle, uh -huh. that, that connector is called a channel. And so your channel um, connects you directly to your heart or ego. So indeed, your desires, your wants, what you feel is truly right for you is feeding into that emotional solar oh, plexus. Okay? That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not going to be that way for everybody. Like some right. people are going to be connected to the root. Some people are going to be connected to the throat. Some will be connected to the sacral. Um, and some people will have a combination, like they will have more than one connection to different. So this is where you get into some of the more layered components of human design. Mm -hmm. But to just um, 
take a step back for a minute and talk about the emotional solar plexus and how our emotions kind of inform our decision making. Um, for people with emotional authority, the most important component is really about time and not making decisions when you are at the height of an emotion or the depth of an emotion. Mm. So the idea here is with the emotional solar plexus, you are going to have what's called an emotional wave. It means your emotions are always going to be somewhere along the wave. And what you're looking for then is, you know, let's say a friend invites you to, you know, go on a vacation uh, to Bali and your first, you know, you you have a sacral here as a manifesting generator, your sacral is defined. So you would potentially feel this rush of excitement and you would maybe be like leaning in and be like really excited about this. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. I want to do it. <laughs> However, as an emotional authority, what you want to do is just say, learn these words. I love that idea. That sounds amazing. Let me get back to you. And then sleep on it. You know, mm. for bigger decisions, you know, you can start to, again, experiment with this. But for bigger decisions, you want to maybe give a little more sleep. Like, are, am I moving or am I leaving this, you know, relationship of, for a long, of a long time? Am I changing jobs? If you're an emotional, you really want to sleep on it a little bit uh, for a few days. Um, <clears throat> you know, but maybe this, for example, this trip. Uh, the next day, something lands in your inbox, and you get like a free voucher for a, you know, a, a flight somewhere or something. Or maybe you have a conversation with somebody in passing, and they mention Bali and how they were just there, and it was amazing. Or maybe on the flip side, something else comes into your awareness where it's like you know, your great grandma's 105th birthday is on that same weekend and you love her so much and want to be there for her. Um, or, you know, maybe, maybe your checking account is overdrawn and you're like, Oh, I really want to go, but maybe now's not the time. Um, <laughs> so you, so the emotional authority is, it's really about allowing those things to come into your awareness mm -hmm. And to not let your emotions kind of dictate because mm. you are going to be feeling things, you know, regularly uh, and you're going to get these rushes and you're going to feel these depths. The important thing is to not make a decision when you are like in the heat of it. Does that make That's sense? That's interesting. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And I've over the years, I have learned to really pick up on the signs and not make decisions based on my emotional state um, where I used to, you know, just leap to leap without really like not, yeah, I don't, I mean, I think things through, but not like super crazy though either. So that's really interesting. In the last few years, I have done more of that, of yeah. sleeping on it and and I, and even with you, like having you on the show, it was like all these little crumbs. I was like, oh, yep, she's the one, you know, like just certain, it's silly. It might be something silly, but on, I will base a decision on all these little signs and clues and breadcrumbs that come in there. I'm like, okay, yes, now we can make a move. Yeah, it's nice. I Oh, I love that you use the word breadcrumbs because that is so like, I'm getting emotional myself because it's such a great, uh, a great way to think about using your emotional authority. Look for those yeah. breadcrumbs, you know, though that's, and I know you, you use the word silly to describe some of these things coming in, but that's exactly what we can't be brushing off, right? Like, like yeah. it might seem silly, go ahead and call it silly. And also park it back there, right? Like put it yes. in the filing system, you know, just, okay, maybe that's something coming in for a reason. And you can always ask for more clarity, for more information, you know, like I'm still not feeling clear on this, you know, send me something like, let me see something. Exactly. Um, yeah. 
And it's worth the wait, I feel. I mean, I shared with you the story about my book before we had hit record. And, you know, I had a large publisher contact me out of the blue. And if I had made a decision based on emotion, I would have already signed a contract with that publisher and they would not have been the right one. And then because I waited and I got all these other little breadcrumbs that I picked up and I ate, I I ended up getting an amazing agent, an amazing publisher, a great book coach, like everything literally just fell into place. So yes, I think, and, and you know what too, I, I feel like, especially in your forties and fifties, it, it is an emotional roller coaster during that time. Mm-hmm. And and we're also facing like, all right, what's the next chapter? What's the next chapter? And so it's very, very easy to make decisions based on your emotional state. And it's it's okay to just go set back, you know, step back, take a look at it. You don't have to analyze the crap out of it, you know. And it's not like analysis by paralysis, right? Or wait, paralysis by analysis. But yeah. Maybe wait for another crumb or two to come along and then go, okay, now I feel good about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think there's th- this is some of the conditioning that comes in from society because yes. there, right, there is th- there's mm-hmm. this sort of unspoken, you know, feeling like people who can make decisions in the moment are strong mm-hmm. and right and yep. confident. And really like 50% of the population has this emotional authority. So half the world is really designed not to make decisions in the moment. So, you know, so us leading the way and learning those, you know, those simple phrases of, I love this idea. You're still giving validation to your emotions. You're still, you know, sharing with the person that you're talking to, like, this sounds really great. I love it, you know, and honoring yourself by saying, I just, let me sleep on it. You know, get, I'll get back to you in a couple of days. Mm-hmm. You know? So I, tell me about these, since you had already guessed of what my energy uh, type would be. So am I type, this is what type one of five energy types? Yep. So there's, um, <clears throat> so your type is one of five energy types. So there are five. Uh, and yours is a manifesting generator. Um, yeah. And so your type is the only actually um, uh, hybrid type. So you're mm-hmm. a little bit manifester and a little bit generator. And mm-hmm. for you as a manifesting generator, I'm going to go back to your chart here again. Um, you have the channel 3420, um, which connects the sacral, uh, that square second square up from the bottom, uh, it connects the sacral to the throat center, which is that, uh, square up at the top toward the top of the chart. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this 3420, which is, yep, exactly. Uh, in yellow, it's, it's, um, unconscious channel for you, but that is, uh, we call that like the, uh, the classic manifesting generator channel. It is, um, it what it's what makes a classic manifesting generator. And <clears throat> there's a whole lot of power uh, to this channel. You also mm-hmm. have uh, the channel of power, which is the 3457, which connects to the spleen. And that's all about intuition and moving fast. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is, you know, there are some components in your chart that uh, would rush you a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I could see that you're like, you're a mover and a shaker. There's also mm-hmm. an intensity. I, so we kind of joke in the human design community about like, which is the most intense of all the different energy types. <laughs> and, uh, and I think it's manifesting generators, honestly. Uh, there's just, I right, agree. There's, yeah. There's like this intensity about, about, uh, this energy. And so, yeah. Your aura is one of a generator. So that means that uh, your aura is warm and enveloping. It's like mm-hmm. juicy. It's it's like good feeling. Mm-hmm. It feels like a warm hug, but it's like, mm, it's just like really good stuff. Um, and there's also kind of this, this manifestor component, which manifestor in human design is different than like what we think of as traditionally manifesting. Mm -hmm. Um, 
it's more like how how their aura, you know, it, uh, how it functions. Um, and any of the human design types can manifest. Like if you're human, you can manifest. Uh, mm -hmm. But manifesting generators just do have an intensity about them. And you can see that you have seven of the nine centers that defined. And oftentimes when you have definition, that also, you know, that is energy that you're here to share with the world. Uh, mm -hmm. And and so that gives you like a level of intensity. But manifesting generators are here to do what lights them up. They're here to follow for, for all manifesting generators, follow a sacral response, but for you, uh, you want to run it through your emotional solar plexus before you actually jump in on things. So let's use that book as an example. Um, you know, feeling that rush of excitement in the moment when the big publisher connected right with you. Mm -hmm. And then maybe there was something into in your intuition that was just like, maybe this isn't quite sitting right. Maybe as more information started coming in, it was like, oh, I don't really know. Like I'm not maybe feeling super excited about what this book is looking like. It's just sort of mm -hmm. ho-hum. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, making that decision to, um, you know, to find an agent, uh, going big, you know, going, yeah. going for what you wanted and then being really rewarded, right? Like using that emotional, and then you probably really got that sacral hit when yeah. you started talking right to them and you found your new publisher. And then you can see like how things really just started to fall into place from there, right? Um, and so that's, it's such a beautiful example of alignment and you know, when you, when you have the courage, because it does take a lot of courage to tell, tell a big publisher, like, hey, yeah. Yeah. thanks, but no, thanks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. So, you know, to, to really honor yourself and be that like, sure about, yeah, I, you know, this, this just feels better, uh, is amazing. So manifesting generators are here to respond. You're going to feel those rushes. And then if you're an emotional, you're going to wait. And if you're a sacral, because generator types are either a, either sacral or emotional solar plexus, if you're a sacral, you can take action in the moment. Um, mm -hmm. So for you, there's that intensity and that, uh, that responding. You're always like looking for things to respond to. It's so cool to kind of, you know, to discover all of this and it helps you feel, I don't know, for me, I feel more connected to myself when you hear some of this and, and some of it's kind of new and some of it's like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's me. And I feel like it, I think you used this word earlier, but that permission, the permission to be you like, yep, this is me. So this is how I'm going to go about living my life. And, and it feels right. And like I, I mentioned earlier, I mean, it took me decades until I finally realized to stop making those decisions based on my emotions. And, and I make better decisions now because it, <clears throat> it feels right to me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like before I used to feel that pressure to make a decision right away. That's what you're supposed to do. You don't have time to, you know, to mess around. And I mean, decisions can be everything, right? Of where you go, where you move, what job you take, all of that. Yeah. And even I've, if it doesn't seem like even when I took the job in Chicago after living in Virginia and selling houses, I'm like, I don't know how to sell a house. But for some odd reason, I was like, this breadcrumb is like staring at me for some odd reason. I'm supposed to be moving to Chicago and selling houses. And I mean, little did I know it led me to where I'm at now. Amazing, so it's right? really, really interesting. Yeah. So, um, are you, so when someone does this, are you able to break it down for them the way that you are for me? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, what we're talking about now is, is really just the tip of the iceberg, but I feel like it gives, it gives you enough to, to start playing with, you know, to, mm -hmm. if you haven't been, uh, maybe giving yourself permission to wait a little bit 
you know, yeah. and then you learn that you're an emotional, it, it just gives you the opportunity to start to practice, you know, like, okay, what does it look like if I, if mm-hmm. I mess around with this a little bit, if I, you know, what if I use those words? Hey, that sounds great. Let me get back to you tomorrow. Um, manifesting generators also tend to change their minds a lot. Like they tend, I, I kind of joke, like I, I have a, a lot of many gen friends and, um, whenever we schedule something, I kind of, it's, it's one of those, like, I'm going to pencil it in <laughs> and then <laughs> in a moment, uh. if the moment, if you decide like, maybe I'm not really in the mood or I got it like something else to do, then I'll be like, no problem, you know? And yeah. for me, knowing and loving manifesting generators, I feel like, I'm okay with that. I I don't take it personally Mm -hmm. mean something about me either. So one of the other things I I love doing is helping people understand the people, their loved ones, you know, like, yes, right. And, and just how does, how does their aura function and how can you not take what's happening with them personally? You know, how can you just understand that this is just how they function. And so instead of getting worried or, uh, you know, caught up in it and making it mean something about you, how can you just support them and, you know, be, be strong and, and understand who you are and what you have to offer. It's fascinating. Just looking at this chart, I don't know how in the world they did all this, but it's pretty cool. (laughs) Like how in the world did they make this thing? You know, like, (laughs) right. It's well, the, you know, going back to the the other systems so the the channels that we've been talking about that link the centers together those come from the kabbalah or the tree of life mm-hmm. uh and they we call them channels and how the channels are sort of grouped together we call that circuitry um so you know there like i said there are lots of different systems and elements these numbers correlate to uh, they've all been mapped out to to genes as well. Oh. So there's like a genetic sequence. So that, you know, there's what we're talking about, uh, the the kind of the big three type strategy and authority. Those are really just the tip of the iceberg. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's so much that you can dive into. So, you know, if you are curious, uh, first of all, if you are curious, if it's lighting you up, if if you feel drawn to it, then there's something here for you. Uh, and you know how, like, just start learning, you know, like download your chart. I have a free Mm -hmm. mini guide that you could start there with your type strategy and authority. And then, you know, it can also be really helpful learning, uh, different things like, you know, your, your Saturn placement, which is, you know, kind of your big lesson throughout this life. And, um, you know, Mm. just getting curious about some of the more nuanced parts of your chart. I'm excited to learn more about my chart. You're right. Excellent. Yeah. So do you teach workshops as well or online courses? Yeah, yeah. So I, I do have a program uh, and I have a, an online workshop that I run uh, occasionally called Midlife by Design. Oh um, and yeah, I, I kind of take you through this you know, introduction to human design and, and most importantly, like how I think it can be used during this period in our life specifically to, to really redefine who we are when we're, you know, when, when kind of the proverbial shit hits the fan, Yeah, uh, we're looking for, you know, looking for, uh, something to ground us. Uh, I think this, you know, this map is, is such a gift. Yeah. And I think it's okay to, to be kind of in a state of confusion or indecision because then that means that there's, there's clarity around the corner. Like don't, don't lose hope. And I know for me, when I look back six years ago when I was a total mess, not knowing, you know, what to do, where to live, how to be, I I knew nothing. And it all just kind of started to fall into place. Yeah. And, And with almost like, even though there was a ton of effort on my part, not to say it was like, oh, we was so easy, but it was like, oh, this job offer came along. Then, you know, then this came along, this idea, and I meet this person that gives this idea. And it was just like, boo, boo. As you look back, it's crazy to see how it comes together. And so, so yeah, don't lose hope, even if you are kind of struggling with what to do next. Yeah. Figure sure. it out. It's almost like, 
part of the process, you know, it's part yeah. of you're you're confused because you know that there's something else. Yeah. Right? And yeah, exactly. That's like a beautiful place to be. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, this has been so cool. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so yeah. I've like it's so fun. I love talking about, you know, charts and uh, obviously I think there's so much in yours that points to, you know, the amazing human that you are. Thank uh, you. And yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's always really fun to see, uh, to see a, a host's chart and be able to share some information with them as well as be able to like help, help listeners. Yeah. Yeah. You guys definitely got to download the chart. It's pretty cool. And then, um, and your website, Lori Lasai, did I say it right? Lori Lisai. Lisai. Lori Lisai. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like Lori Lisa with an I on the end. Hi. Exactly. Lisa with an I <laughs> at the end. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. This has been yeah. great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it, it's been amazing. I love uh, I love ta- talking human design and uh, helping women in midlife. For sure. Yeah. And designing a new life. Mm-hmm. Great. Exactly. Uh, Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Did this podcast inspire you, challenge you, trigger you to make a change or spit out your coffee laughing? Good. Then there are three ways you can thank me. Number one, you can leave a written review of this podcast on Apple iTunes. Number two, you can take a screenshot of the episode and share it on the social media and tag me, Wendy Valentine. Number three, Share it with another midlifer that needs a makeover. You know who I'm talking about. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Get out there and be bold, be free, be you.